Hi guys, I'm um, getting ready to read again, um, and we're going to start in Genesis 25, so let's pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. Father, please impart your wisdom to us that you want to receive that you want us to receive out of your word today. And we love you so very much, and you're so worthy. And we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. And happy Father's Day. Okay, so we're in Genesis 25 in the contemporary English version still. Abraham marries Keturah. Verse 1, Abraham married Keturah, and they had six sons. Zimran, because um, Sarah died in the last chapter. Okay, and they had six sons. Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Median, Ishbak, and Shua. Later, Jokshan became the father of Sheba and Dedan. And when Dedan grew up, he had three sons. Ashuram, Latushim, and Lumen. Median also had five sons, Ephah, 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 Ephur, Hanok, Abida, and Eldah. While Abraham was still alive, he gave gifts to the sons of Hagar and Keturah. He also sent their sons to live in the east, far from his son Isaac. And when Abraham died, he left everything to Isaac. The death of Abraham. Abraham died at the ripe old age of 175. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him east of Hebron in Machpelah Cave that was part of the field Abraham had bought from Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite. Abraham was buried there beside his wife Sarah. God blessed Isaac after this and Isaac moved to a place called the Well of the Living One Who Sees Me. Ishmael's descendants. Ishmael was a son of Abraham and Hagar, the slave woman of Sarah. Ishmael had 12 sons in this order. Nebaioth, Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Nafish, and Kadima. Each of Ishmael's sons was a tribal chief, and a village was named after each of them. Ishmael had settled in the land east of his brothers, and his sons settled everywhere from Havilah to Shur, Shur, east of Egypt on the way to Asher. Ishmael was 137 when he died. The birth of Esau and Jacob. Isaac was the son of Abraham, and he was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel. She was also the sister of Laban, the Aramean from northern Syria. Almost 20 years later, Rebekah still had no children, so Isaac asked the Lord to let her have a child, and the Lord answered his prayer. Before Rebekah gave birth, she knew she was going to have twins because she could feel them inside her fighting each other. She thought, why is this happening to me? Finally, she asked the Lord why her twins were fighting, and he told her, your two sons will become two separate nations. The younger of the two will be stronger, and the older son will be his servant. When Rebecca gave birth, the first baby was covered with red hair, so he was named Esau. The second baby grabbed onto his brother's heel, so they named him Jacob. Sounds like heel. Oh, okay. Isaac was 60 years old when they were born. Esau sells his rights as the firstborn son. As Jacob and Esau grew older, Esau liked the outdoors and became a good hunter, while Jacob lived the quiet life of a shepherd. Esau would take the meat of wild animals to his father Isaac, so Isaac loved him more, but Jacob was his mother's favorite son. 
One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came home hungry and said, I'm starving to death. Here and now, give me some of that red stew. That's how Esau got the name Edom. Jacob replied, sell me your rights as the firstborn son. In the description, it says the firstborn son inherited the largest amount of property as well as the leadership of the family. So Jacob said, sell me your rights as the firstborn son. And verse 32, I'm about to die, Esau answered. What good will those rights do me? But Jacob said, promise me your birthrights here and now. And that's what Esau did. Jacob then gave Esau some bread and some of the bean stew. And when Esau had finished eating and drinking, he just got up and left, showing how little he thought of his rights as the firstborn. Okay, chapter 26. Isaac and Abimelech. Once during Abraham's lifetime, the fields had not produced enough grain, and now the same thing happened. So Isaac went to King Abimelech of the Philistines in the land of Gerar, because the Lord had appeared to Isaac and said, Isaac, stay away from Egypt. I will show you where I want you to go. You will live there as a foreigner, but I will be there with you and bless you. I will keep my promise to your father Abraham by giving this land to you and your descendants. I will give you as many descendants as there are stars in the sky, and I will give you your descendants all of this land. They will be a blessing to every nation on earth because Abraham did everything I told him to do. Verse 6, Isaac moved to Gerar with his beautiful wife, Rebekah. He was afraid that someone might kill him to get her, and so he told everyone that Rebekah was his sister. Wow, these guys do the same things as their father. <laughs> okay, verse 8, after Isaac had been there a long time, King Abimelech looked out a window and saw Isaac hugging and kissing Rebekah. Abimelech called him in and said, Rebecca, or Rebecca must be your wife. Why did you say she was, she's your sister? Because I thought someone would kill me, Isaac answered. Don't you know what you've done? Abimelech exclaimed. If someone had slept with her, you would have made our whole nation guilty. Then Abimelech warned his people that anyone who even touched Isaac or Rebecca would be put to death. Isaac planted grain and had a good harvest that same year. The Lord blessed him and Isaac was so successful that he became very rich. In fact, the Philistines were jealous of the large number of sheep, goats, and slaves that Isaac owned. And they stopped up the wells that Abraham's servants had dug before his death. Finally, Abimelech said, Isaac, I want you to leave our country. You have become too powerful to stay here. Isaac left and settled in Gerar Valley where he cleaned out those wells that the Philistines had stopped up. Isaac also gave each of the wells the same name that Abraham had given to them. By doing this, Isaac claimed ownership of the wells. Okay. While his servants were digging in the valley, they found a spring-fed well. But the shepherds of Gerar Valley quarreled with Isaac's shepherds and claimed the water belonged to them. So this well was named Coral because they had quarreled with Isaac. Isaac's servants dug another well and the shepherds also quarreled about it. So that well was named Jealous. Finally, they dug one more well. There was no quarreling this time and the well was named Lots of Room because the Lord had given them room and would make them very successful. Isaac went on to Beersheba where the Lord appeared to him that night and told him, Don't be afraid. I am the God who was worshipped by your father Abraham, my servant. I will be with you and bless you, and because of Abraham, I will give you many descendants. Isaac built an altar there and worshipped the Lord. Then he set up camp and his servant started digging a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had left Gerar and was taking his advisor, Ahuzath, uh, and his army commander, Phicol, to see Isaac. When they arrived, Isaac asked, Why are you here? Didn't you send me away because you hated me? 
They answered, We now know for certain that the Lord is with you, and we have decided that there needs to be a peace treaty between you and us. So let's make a solemn agreement not to harm each other. Remember, we have never hurt you, and when we sent you away, we let you go in peace. The Lord has truly blessed you. Isaac gave a big feast for them, and everyone ate and drank. Early the next morning, Isaac and the others made a solemn agreement. Then he let them go in peace. Later that same day, Isaac's servants came and said, We've struck water. So Isaac named the well Sheba, and the town is still called Beersheba. Esau's Foreign Wives when Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, the daughter of Beri the Hittite, and Basimath, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. But these two women brought a lot of grief to Esau's parents, Isaac and Rebekah. Okay, chapter 27. Isaac blesses Jacob. Isaac was old and almost blind when he called on his firstborn son Esau, who asked him, Father, what can I do for you? Isaac replied, I am old and might die at any time. So go hunting with your bow and arrows and kill a wild animal. Cook some of that tasty food that I love so much and bring it to me. I want to eat it once more and give you my blessing before I die. Rebecca had been listening, and as soon as Esau left to go hunting, she said to Jacob, I heard your father tell Esau to kill a wild animal and cook some tasty food for him before he dies. Your father said this because he wants to bless your brother with the Lord as his witness. Now, my son, listen carefully to what I want you to do. Go and kill two of your best young goats and bring them to me. I'll cook the tasty food that your father loves so much. Then you can take it to him so he can eat it and give you his blessing before he dies. My brother Esau is a hairy man, Jacob reminded her, and I'm not. If my father touches me and realizes I'm trying to trick him, he'll put a curse on me instead of giving me a blessing. Rebecca insisted, let his curse fall on me. Just do what I say and bring me the meat. So Jacob brought the meat to his mother and she cooked the tasty food that his father liked. Then she took Esau's best clothes and put them on Jacob. She also covered the smooth part of his hands and neck with goat skins and gave him some bread and the tasty food she had cooked. Jacob went to his father and said, Father, here I am. Which one of my sons are you? His father asked. Jacob replied, I am Esau, your firstborn, and I have done what you told me. Please sit up and eat the meat I have brought, then you can give me your blessing. Isaac asked, my son, how did you find an animal so quickly? <clears throat> the Lord your God was kind to me, Jacob answered. My son, Isaac said, come closer where I can touch you and find out if you're really Esau, if you really are Esau. Jacob went closer. His father touched him and said, you sound like Jacob, but your hands feel hairy like Esau's. And so Isaac blessed Jacob, thinking he was Esau. Isaac asked, are you really my son Esau? Yes, I am, Jacob answered. So Isaac told him, serve me that wild meat and I can give you my blessing. Jacob gave him some meat and he ate it. He also gave him some wine and he drank it. Then Isaac said, son, come over here and kiss me. While Jacob was kissing him, Isaac caught the smell of his clothes and said, the smell of my son is like a field the Lord has blessed. God will bless you, my son, with dew from heaven and with fertile fields, rich with grain and grapes. Nations will be your servants and bow down to you. You will rule over your brothers and they will kneel at your feet. Anyone who curses you will be cursed. Anyone who blesses you will be blessed. Right after Isaac had given Jacob his blessing and Jacob had gone, Esau came back from hunting. He cooked the tasty food, brought it to his father and said, Father, please sit up and eat the meat I brought you so you can give me your blessing. Who are you? Isaac asked. I am Esau, your firstborn son. Isaac started trembling and said, 
then who brought me some wild meat right before you came in? I ate it and I gave him a blessing that cannot be taken back. Esau cried out in great distress, Father, give me a blessing too. Isaac answered, your brother tricked me and stole your blessing. Esau replied, my brother deserves the name Jacob. In Hebrew, Jacob sounds like cheat, I guess. My brother deserves the name Jacob because he's already cheated me twice. The first time he cheated me out of my rights as the firstborn son, and now he has cheated me out of my blessing. Then Esau asked his father, don't you have any blessing left for me? My son, Isaac answered, I have made Jacob the ruler over you and your brothers, and all of you will be his servants. I have also promised him all the grains and grapes that he needs. There's nothing left that I can do for you. Father, Esau asked, don't you have any, don't you have one, or don't you have more than one blessing? You can surely give me a blessing too. Then Esau started crying again. So his father said, your home will be far from that fertile land where dew comes down from the heavens. You will live by the power of your sword and be your brother's slave. But when you decide to be free, you will break loose. Esau hated his brother Jacob because he had stolen the blessing that was supposed to be his. So he said to himself, just as soon as my father dies, I'll kill Jacob. When Rebekah found out what Esau planned to do, she sent for Jacob and told him, Son, your brother Esau is just waiting for a chance to kill you. Now listen carefully and do what I say. Go to the home of my brother Laban in Haran, Haran and stay with him for a while. When Esau stops being angry and forgets what you have done to him, I'll send for you to come home. Why should I lose both of my sons on the same day? Rebecca later told Isaac, Those Hittite wives of Esau are making my life miserable. If Jacob marries a Hittite woman, I'd be better off dead. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Chapter 28. Isaac's instructions to Jacob. <clears throat> Isaac called in Jacob, then gave him a blessing and said, Don't marry any of those Canaanite women. Go at once to your mother's father, Bethuel, in northern Syria and choose a wife from one of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. I pray that God all-powerful or almighty God will bless you with many descendants and let you become a great nation. May he bless you with the land he promised Abraham so that you will take over this land where we now live as foreigners. Isaac then sent Jacob to stay with Rebekah's brother Laban, the son of Bethuel the Aramean. Esau marries the daughter of Ishmael. Isn't that his uncle? <clears throat> Verse 6, Esau found out that his father Isaac had blessed Jacob and had warned him not to marry any of the Canaanite women. He also learned that Jacob had been sent to find a wife in northern Syria and that he had obeyed his father and mother. Esau already had several wives, but he now realized how much his father hated the Canaanite women. So he married Ishmael's daughter, Mahalath, who was a sister of Nebaioth and the granddaughter of Abraham. Jacob's dream at Bethel. Jacob left the town of Beersheba and started out for Haran. At sunset, he stopped for the night and went to sleep, resting his head on a large rock. In a dream, he saw a ladder that reached from earth to heaven and God's angels were going up and down on it. The Lord was standing beside the ladder Jacob's ladder. The Lord was standing beside the ladder and said I am the Lord God who was worshipped by Abraham and Isaac. 
I will give to you and your family the land on which you're now sleeping. Your descendants will spread over the earth in all directions and will become as numerous as the specks of dust. Your family will be a blessing to all people. Wherever you go, I will watch over you. Then later, I will bring you back to this land. I won't leave you. I will do all I have promised. Jacob woke up suddenly and thought, The Lord is in this place, and I didn't even know it. Then Jacob became frightened and said, What a frightening place. It must be the house of God and the gateway to heaven. When Jacob got up early the next morning, he took the rock that he had used for a pillow and stood it up as a place of worship. Then he poured olive oil on the rock to dedicate it to God, and he named the place Bethel. Bethel means house of God. Before that, it had been named Luz. Jacob solemnly promised God, if you go with me and watch over me as I travel, and if you give me food and clothes and bring me safely home again, you will be my God. This rock will be your house, and I will give back to you a tenth of everything you give me. Okay, um, so let's stop there and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us, and thank you for your Bible. Please help us retain all the information we read today. And we give you all the glory. And please bless everyone in the world. And thank you for holding our hands through these troubling times. And we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, God bless and I love you.